and welcome back to Who Ate It First, a food history podcast with a twist. I'm Kendall Rehnquist. And I'm Logan Rehnquist. Is everyone doing good? I know you can't talk back to me because this is kind of a one-way deal with the podcast, but how's everyone doing? Hope you're doing good. Hope you're doing good. We're doing fine. Yeah, doing pretty good. I'm properly caffeinated this time. I'm working on it. I have a coffee next to me. This is a second coffee for the day. Yeah. All right. Truth be on truth be honest. Truth be honest. Truth be told. Truth be told. Or be honest. <laughs> truth to be honest is where I was going, and then they both became one phrase. Okay. To be honest, I'm tired. So I'm not bringing my A game in this episode. <laughs> so I do apologize. If Are you sure you I want to keep going? Seem a little lacrimose. Yeah, I'm fine going. I'm gonna power through. Do you want to pause and like chug that? No, I don't. <laughs> then you'll then you'll get the opposite. I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna up. I'm gonna up my energy. We're gonna pause and we're gonna do some jumping jacks. Okay, fine. We can pause. <laughs> okay, we're back. I did my jumping jacks, <laughs> and I'm so ready now. <laughs> Let's get down to business. All right. Well, I hope you come along with us in this wonderful, wonderful venture as. You probably already know because you've clicked on this and it has a title, but we're doing Apple Pie this episode. Ooh. We really love doing the Dole Whip episode. I know you had a lot of fun researching that. I did. You found and some really interesting stuff about it. It was also delicious. So if you haven't listened to that episode, I recommend it. Dole Whip and Disneyland are so quintessentially American that I thought I'd continue in that same vein. I wanted to know who ate apple pie first. It's delicious, it's wholesome, it's American. Yes. Or is it? A what? A what? A what, what? What? It just makes me think of like cute little grandmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cute little grandmas baking pies and putting them on windowsills, windowsills. to cool off. And in every cartoon, an uh, animal comes by and steals it, or some ruffian. Comes it also by and steals it. gives you su- superpowers. Because you lift off the ground and go toward the pie. The pie also becomes like sentient because it can create <laughs> hands with its steam. Yeah. And go up the nose. Do a lot of, yeah, go up the nose and like sensually like Beckon guide you, you toward, <laughs> toward the pie. I'm making hand gestures as I'm doing this, even though you can't see this. Uh, let me tell you, the hand gestures are gross. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a come hither, but grosser <laughs> somehow. All right. So it might surprise you to find out that apple pie actually originated in England. It was born from culinary influences from France, the Netherlands, and the Ottoman Empire as early as 1390, hmm. centuries before the pilgrims set foot on Plymouth Rock. So actually not of American origin, pretty par for the course on this show. Yeah. Which is true. We, I feel like we've done a lot of things where I'm like, surely this is like an American institution, right? Yeah. Nope. No. Bacon? No. <laughs> uh, Dole Whip? I mean, yeah, I guess Dole Whip. French fries. That's the one I was thinking of. French fries? No. No. Caesar salad? Not American at all, but not from where I thought it was from. I didn't realize it was from Mexico. <laughs> yeah. That was a fun thing to learn. Look I'm going to stop cliff noting our podcast. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. In summary. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, apple pie was brought to the colonies by European settlers, where the dish quickly caught on. America's first cookbook, American Cookery, by Amelia Simmons, published in 1796, included two recipes for the fruit-based dessert. That's so crazy. 1796. Six? Wow. That was not that long after we were founded. Yeah. So that's kind of cool, actually. Didn't take that long for our first cookbook <laughs> to come out. Yeah. I love We're... the title, too. American Cookery. Just right to the point. Yes. Succinct. You know what you're getting with that one. Brevity is the name of the game. <laughs> I can't imagine, though. So, okay, 1796. There can't be that many noteworthy recipes. Was it just stuff that they brought over from England and they were like, this is all right. Yeah. <laughs> Put it in there. <laughs> it was probably mostly English-based cooking. With twists on whatever was available at the time. 
Yeah, there was probably a lot of English influence in the cookbook, if I had to guess. I have not read it, so I'm just making my own guesses and assumptions here, but it would probably be English influence and an American twist on a lot of those recipes. That makes sense. And yeah. probably a lot of yay verily. <laughs> <laughs> Most likely. Isn't that how they talked in 1776? <laughs> Ye old American cookery. <laughs> Easy and affordable, apple pie was a typical American cuisine by the 18th and 19th centuries, but it didn't become associated with our cultural identity until the 20th century when advertising news and two world wars transformed the dish into a national symbol. Though the exact origin of the phrase as American as apple pie seems to have been lost to time, a 1928 New York Times editorial argued for the dish's national importance by asserting that pie had become the American synonym for prosperity. Pie is the food of the heroic, it declared. No pie-eating people can be permanently vanquished. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like the best sentence ever. I have eaten pie now, so I no one can fight me or no one can defeat me. Exactly. <laughs> It just, like, creates some sort of shield against you. Yes. <laughs> so you can't be vanquished. It's like me thrill made by the elves. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but it's pie in your stomach. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> by World War II, it was a symbol of feminine love associated with home warmth and soldiers proudly proclaimed that they were fighting for mom and apple pie. <laughs> things that they were missing, things that they loved, and made them want to fight the fight. I think that is so sweet. Like It's kind of corny now, but I don't know. I think there's something really sweet and wholesome about that. Mm -hmm. And it's a stark contrast to what they were about to go do. Yeah, it was. I mean, just like wanting to come home to really simple things. Yeah. Because of the stuff that they were about to endure. So, yeah, I definitely get it. Yeah. They just wanted like a hug from their mom and grandma. Mm -hmm. And I think pies are edible hugs. You don't like my analogy? No, I agree. Sorry. <laughs> you looked at me so crazily. No, I was just trying to think of something in response to that. But I couldn't come up with anything. <laughs> so. It was a weird analogy. <laughs> Apple pie is now seen as American because it illustrates how cultures worldwide can join together to create something new and altogether wonderful. Like apples, we're all transplants, and America is a great, big, lovely melting pot of people. Mm. Which is very true. I love that. I am of Swedish descent. Not that far back. I mean, I'm straight up American now. I have no... I look Swedish, but that's as far as it goes. I don't know... Any Swedish, you know, I've never been there. I want to go, but I've never been there. I'm only a few generations, though. It's like my great-great-grandfather, I think, or great-great-great, I forget which one, mm. came over. And then year of Irish? Mm -hmm. Scottish and Scottish Irish. Scottish and Irish descent. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, if you, if you go back far enough, like, most people have family that came to America. Yeah. And we're not originally from here. Mm -hmm. Getting into a quote from food52.com on an article by, oh boy, I'm going to butcher this name and I apologize, Rossi Anastapulo. Oh. Is, I'm not going to try it again. It's only going to get worse. They quote, in many ways, apple pie embodies the immigrant experience, which in the end is the most distinctly American experience of all, a fruit that originated in Kazakhstan starring in a British pastry and beloved by people across the United States, transcends national and cultural boundaries. The United States was woven from the cultural influences, histories, and traditions of countless populations who have made this country their home, creating a richly vibrant community that is distinct all on its own. I love that. That is really nice. That is so awesome. Good job, Rossi. We love you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's actually... Pretty much what I had for the history of pie. So getting into the actual pie of it all, from an article on manyeats.com, 
here is a selection of some of the most popular variants of apple pie because there's a lot of different versions besides just like what we know as our traditional american apple pie yeah first up the english the first known apple pie recipe is english and dates back to 1381 the english apple pie differs significantly from the traditional american apple pie and doesn't have a crust Additional ingredients in English apple pie include raisins, figs, pears, and spices. Hmm. Which sounds kind of like a mince pie a little bit. Yeah, that definitely. Well, I mean, it's English. Yeah. So mince pie is English. So that checks out. Next up is the Dutch. There's two major types of Dutch apple pie. There's the apple kruimel tart, mm-hmm. a crumble style pie, and the apple tart, uh-huh. a lattice style pie. A Dutch apple pie has a bottom pastry crust with lemon juice and cinnamon as ingredients. Mm. An American pie is actually a modified version of the Dutch apple tart. Hmm. That checks out with the lattice. Mm Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. Gotcha. I was curious as to where that came from, so glad you answered my question. There you go. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. (laughs) Thanks, teach. (laughs) And lastly, French one. There's a famous... French apple pie called, you're going to probably have to help me with this one because you speak French, tart tatin? Tatin. Tatin. I think so because it's T-A-T-I-N. Yeah. Tatin. Tatin. I think so. You serve it upside down with a bottom and side crust filled with apples and other caramelized fruit. You can also add additional ingredients such as vegetables, pears, and even tomatoes to your French apple pie. I'm sorry, I'm laughing. Our dog is chewing a bone on my foot, and now he's scratching at the bone, trying to get it from me while I'm trying to record this podcast. So I'm very much multitasking right now. Good job, babe. So he he does do that. I'm not laughing about the French pies. I'm just calling that out. <laughs> Another popular variation of apple pie is apple pie with ice cream or pie a la mode. Oh, no. <laughs> They're... Appears to actually be three different theories of how pie a la mode was invented. Of course, because literally no food history is easy or there's one clear answer. I was going to even mention that, but if if we've learned anything from this podcast, it's that food history is confusing <laughs> and no one seems to have an exact answer. Yeah. Messy. Very yeah. messy. So the first theory is that a restaurant in Duluth, Minnesota, first served the pie and ice cream together in 1885. In Duluth? Yeah. (laughs) Of all places, Duluth, Minnesota. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) The second theory is that a man named Professor Townsend ordered a slice of apple pie with ice cream in 1936 at the Cambridge Hotel in Washington County, New York. Another guest asked Townsend the name of the dessert, and when he discovered that there was no name, Townsend just decided to dub it Pie a la Mode. He later found himself dining at the famous Delmonico's restaurant in New York and asked for Pie a la Mode, but the waiter did not know what this was, and that made Townsend very upset. I found a quote. I don't know if this is a true quote or not, so I'll just paraphrase, but basically he was saying, how could a place like Delmonico's not have it when I've had it at Cambridge? So, like, <laughs> you should basically, you know, get it together. <laughs> <laughs> so, the the waiter got scolded and they brought him pie and ice cream and then it became on the menu at Delmonico's. Okay, so he did it by intimidating the poor wait staff. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. A few years after Professor Townsend passed away, And a reporter reading the obituaries of Professor Townsend. In the obituary, it mentioned that he was the inventor of pie a la mode. Uh And the reporter wanted to set the record straight, apparently, because he knew differently that it was actually invented in Duluth, Minnesota. So he kind of went on a bit of a crusade to try to give Duluth, Minnesota the recognition (laughs) for it. I have no idea. That sounds like a wild story. Oh. I don't know if that's true or not. That's one of the theories. Wow. The last one is much less exciting and not intertwined with the other two. 
So the third one is just that it was created at the 1893 World's Fair in Chicago by the French. Oh, well, I suppose that one would make plenty of sense. Yeah. Because a public platform. Mm -hmm. Yada, yada. And I guess in French, a la mode means fashionable or something like that. Yeah, it literally translates to like of the fashion. Mm -hmm. So like fashion of the time, like zeitgeist. So it's just interesting. So if we're going with the theory that the guy, Professor Townsend, said, give me some ice cream with my pie. And he wanted to call it a la mode. So he was essentially creating the fashion, mm -hmm. which is, I don't know, funny to me. Because norm normally you would say like, Oh, pumpkin spice latte, that's very like fashionable today. That's very of of the time. It didn't exist yet. So he was, I don't know, that seems really <laughs> pompous that he was like, oh, a la mode. Like, I'm going to create it and it's going to be a big, big hit. <laughs> Indoor plumbing, it's going to be big. Like, <laughs> that was kind of very pompous of him to say. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for that French uh, language lesson. That's helpful, actually. You're welcome. <laughs> Okay, so there's your theories for a la mode pie. <laughs> <laughs> so before we jump into the kitchen, there's a couple things I wanted to talk about as well. If you're baking an apple pie, culinary apples are best. Popular baking apples for apple pie include Granny Smith, which is what we're actually going to be using today. Jonna Gold or Jonathan apples. Jonathan apples? Jonathan apples. I've never heard of those. <laughs> I haven't either, actually. <laughs> Cortland apples, Brayburn apples, or Honeycrisp. Oh, no, I have heard of that one. A little pie factoid for you. <laughs> I love a good pie fact. Every year, grocery stores in the United States sell around 186 million pies. Nearly 20% of all pies that grocery stores sell are apple pies. According to a survey by the American Pie Council, <laughs> which I kind of love is the thing. Now I got to be on that council. I know. <laughs> how, <laughs> how do, do I, I get there? How do I get there? <laughs> we the got same. two new members ready to go. Contact us. We want to be. <laughs> Forget podcasting. I want to be on the American Pie Council. I want to be in the room where it happens. New which goal. Is apparently the American Pie Council. <laughs> the APC. Like, do you just eat? pie and talk about pie all day long oh i hope so yeah that'd be like amazing that sounds great the american pie council that we are gonna now become members of <laughs> one in five americans prefer apple pie oh there you go <laughs> Today we are going to be using a recipe that's actually a bit more of a Dutch crumble variant of apple pie. It's actually a family favorite, one that my mom has made many times. And she found this recipe from Bon Appetit magazine many years ago. So you probably still find it if you Google it. All right. So the ingredients for the crust, you need one and one third cups of all-purpose flour, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of sugar, quarter cup or half a stick of chilled unsalted butter cut into half-inch cubes, quarter cup of frozen solid vegetable shortening also cut into half-inch cubes, three tablespoons at least of ice water, half a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar, and for the filling, you need three and a quarter pounds of Granny Smith apples, peeled, cored, and sliced a quarter inch thick. Apple tater. Apple tater. <laughs> we have a lot of references to Watcher. <laughs> You've cut most of them out. <laughs> <laughs> Not all of them. Two thirds cup of sugar, two tablespoons of all purpose flour, two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, two tablespoons of unsalted butter melted. And then for the topping, you need a cup of all-purpose flour, half a cup of sugar, quarter cup of packed golden brown sugar, one and a half teaspoons of ground cinnamon, half a teaspoon of salt, and six tablespoons of chilled unsalted butter cut into half-inch cubes. And then if you want, vanilla ice cream to top the pie with. If you want it a la mode. I just wanted to say that Kendall has made this recipe before. He made it for Thanksgiving. 
And my family ranted and raved about it. They loved it so much. My little cousin, he ate like two thirds of it by himself. It's a really good recipe. To you, listener, I highly recommend that you actually make this one. <laughs> I, I don't mean to, you know, jump ahead and rave a roast, but I'm going to rave about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's probably going to be a 10 out of 10 chef's kisses. But... <laughs> so y'all better buckle up. If you make anything from our episodes, Kendall is saying make this one. Yeah, make this one. You heard please. it here first. It's so good. <laughs> All right. So getting into the actual cooking, what we're going to do here first, we got to make the crust. So we're going to mix the flour, salt, and sugar in a large bowl. Then we're going to add butter and shortening, rubbing it in with our fingertips until coarse meal forms. And once you do see that, you're going to mix that three tablespoons of ice water and vinegar in a small bowl to blend together. Then you'll drizzle that over the flour mixture. Stir with forks until a moist clump forms. <laughs> I know you love that word. Adding more water by teaspoonfuls if the dough is dry. Dough is really weird. Sometimes you'll get a perfect... The last time I made this, I only needed the three tablespoons. This next time I make it, I might need to put in more. Then you'll gather the dough into a ball, flatten it into a disc, and wrap it in plastic wrap and refrigerate it for 30 minutes to let it settle. So we're going to do all that and come back in 30 minutes. So now that we have the dough chilled and rested, we're going to position a rack in the center oven and preheat it to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Roll out the dough on a lightly floured surface until it is 12 inches in diameter. Then we're going to transfer that dough into a 9 inch diameter pie dish, which by the way is something else you'll need in case you didn't know that you needed a pie dish you or a pie. You super need a pie dish. <laughs> if it's hanging over a lot, then you'll want to trim it back to about half an inch. And then you can take the edges and crimp it, which crimping is interesting. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. I would highly recommend looking up a video because <laughs> you'll get a much better visual of what you're supposed to do. And once this is done, you can go ahead and put the pie crust back into the fridge. And then we're going to start working on the filling. Oh, All right. For the filling, it's very long and challenging. I don't know if I can do this. It's, are you ready? No. I'm about to tell you what we need to do. I'm scared. All of those ingredients I listed previously for the filling, uh -huh. put them in a large bowl and, mi and mix them. I can't. You can. No. I believe in you. You do it. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> I'm incapable. I'm going to put all of those ingredients in a large bowl and mix them until the apples are coated. Wow. And then you're done masterful <laughs> then the filling's done yay yay all right and then the last thing is the topping that we'll need to do since we're not doing a lattice so we're going to actually make that crumble topping we're going to blend the first five ingredients that i mentioned for the topping part into a food processor and then we're going to add the chilled butter cubes and then kind of doing a pulsing with the um with the food processor so you just kind of push the, the on off button Got it, repeatedly. Quickly. You're going to keep pulsing the food processor until the mixture resembles wet sand. And then that's pretty much done too. And it really does actually look like wet sand. All right. So to actually assemble the pie, <laughs> what you're going to do is we're going to toss the filling, once again, to redistribute the juices. Because as you've been making the topping, you'll probably notice that there is like a lot of juices forming in the bowl mm. from the sugar starting to kind of break down the apples a little bit. And then we're going to put all of that onto the top of the crust. It's going to have a mound on the top. And it's going to be quite a big mound, honestly. The <laughs> last time I made this, I was like, surely this is not right, right? Because it was like you had your pie, and then you could have had like two pies stacked on top of it, and that was as tall as it was. It looked incorrect. It, it looked wrong. But don't worry. It's going to have a big mound on it. And then you're going to do something that weirder you're going to add more stuff to that mound because you're going to pack the topping all over and around the apples pack it and then you're going to want to put that pie on a baking sheet if you have one especially a rimmed baking sheet because juices may come out as you're baking the pie and then we're going to bake it at that 400 degrees for about 40 minutes 
if you do notice that the edges are starting to brown pretty quickly, like if you're only 10 minutes in, you're already seeing a lot of browning happening in your crust, then you'll want to cover the top of it with foil to prevent burning. After that 40 minutes is up, you're going to actually reduce the temperature to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and bake it again for about another 45 minutes. So it's going to be in the oven for a while. But when it comes out, it's going to look real good. And there you go. You have pie. We're going to bake this and we'll be back to just rave it. Just We're not going to rave or roast. There's no roast. It's going to be a rave. Unless you burn it. If you want to listen it. in about how much we love this pie, feel free to keep listening. Otherwise, we'll see you next time, I guess. <laughs> Stick around for how delicious it is. <laughs> Yeah, baby. <laughs> that was some apple pie. Kendall was uncomfortably touching his torso. It's rubbing <laughs> my belly because it is delicious pie. I keep trying to pull back from the mic so I don't yell in people's ears. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 10 out of 10 chef's kisses. <laughs> so good. I love it. The crust wasn't perfect. So, Paul Hollywood, I do apologize. Um, I am eternally and forever sorry that I got a soggy bottom. He literally got a soggy bottom. I think, I don't know for sure, but I think the reason why it happened is because I was using those cheap pie tins that you can buy at the grocery store. They're like small and metal. I think it's those are a little under nine inches. It's also kind of thin thickness wise. Yeah, they're like disposable. Yeah. So I was using those, and instead this time, I was using my glass pie pan, which is bigger and thicker, so the proportions were different than Thanksgiving. And two, I think if you use a metal tin, the metal will heat, so it'll kind of cook the bottom a little bit better. That actually makes sense. Than glass does, yeah. I think I probably just need to like bake it longer, or I know you mentioned blind baking, which is not something I did. So maybe that's something I could have tried as well. I do apologize to the great Paul Hollywood. I had a soggy bottom. That's all right. Despite that, I'm giving this baby a 10 out of 10. So good. (laughs) It's so good. I loved it so much. It's the right amount of like sweetness and sourness of the apples. And you get some nice like buttery crust. Like the crust is really simple, but it adds like a nice like crunch factor and buttery goodness to it. And just a different texture to it. Otherwise, it's just kind of like mushy, mushy. Mm. And the crumble on top also adds like kind of a third dimension to it. Mm. I could talk all day. I love that pie. I'm probably going to go. Well, no, I'm going to share it with my friends. Otherwise, I'd eat the whole pie. <laughs> but <laughs> it's so good. What do you rate it? I love you and I love your pie. I think I'm going to give it a nine and a half out of ten. Oh, <laughs> be still my heart. I'm sorry. It was still really, really good. Maybe it would maybe it was because it was a different thickness, but the one at Thanksgiving was just really good. Maybe it was also the season, the pie season. True. Family We're kind of past the pie season. Turkey, the whole nine, and it was just like a beautiful apple pie. And so maybe I'm just like not in the right vibe because it's How hot is it today? It's like 80 degrees today. So it is hot. So I don't know if (laughs) pie fits the vibe. You don't want nice warm pie. If it was a la mode though, maybe that would have shot it up to a 10. Because then you get that Mm. little bit of like nice cool cut of ice cream. Maybe. But we didn't have ice cream. That's very, that's a very good point. Maybe. So it's not your fault. I think I just wasn't really in the pie mood. That's fair. But your pie was. I disagree, but that's fair. That's okay. Your pie was really good. So listener, go make that pie. (laughs) Thank you for tuning in to Who Ate It First. If you like our podcast, please help us out by following our Instagram account to see some behind the scenes pictures or by leaving us a review. Also, we'd love to hear from you. If you have a food you'd like us to do an episode on or a funny story you'd like to share with us, then email us at whoateitfirst at gmail.com. We might share it in one of our future episodes. 
Once again, I am Logan Runquist. And I'm Kendall Runquist. It has been delicious. And apple pie. <laughs> Bye.